Welcome back to Cactus Sailing. This week I wanted to share with you everything I know about AIS um, and also how we install it on our boat through a step-by-step -step guide on how we do that. Now what we've got, or what I've decided to go for, um, is the M-Track transponder and also a VHF splitter and that's just so we can integrate it into our system. Now the reason we wanted AIS is because this year we want to travel a bit further afield, we want to go to northern France this year. And English Channel is really busy, lots of ships in there, lots of uh, cargo ships, tankers, this kind of stuff, a lot of commercial shipping going through the English Channel. So we want to see where they are, but more importantly we want those guys to be able to see us on their AIS and on their radar, this kind of stuff. So we think it's an important uh, navigational aid or a safety feature on boats. So that's the decision we took and why we want to install it. And the reason we went for a transponder was because the price difference to get it set up on our boat from a transponder to a, just a receiver only wasn't particularly that much difference. So I'm gonna share with you now what we've already got on our boat uh, and how we're gonna connect these up. So the first obvious thing people might say is why don't we just change the VHF out for a transponder version? Now the cheapest transponder version radio I can find was around about a thousand pounds so I didn't want to spend that much kind of money on just um, connecting our system up so that was a no-go. Also in this nest of wires in here we have no NMEA connectors or anything like that. There's no C-Talk or anything like that, C-Talk is only connected to our upstairs plotter. So that means whatever we're putting in there, we need a VHF splitter. The plotter we've got upstairs is a Raymarine uh, 550 something or other GPS maps thing there. That does not have um, AIS capability as far as I know. I couldn't work out how the hell to get AIS on that. It's the bigger plotter of the two that we've got on the boat, but we do have two plotters. Um, now the plotter we've got down here um, on the nav desk does have AIS capability. And that's this old um, GPS unit we've got here. Um, it's a Garmin GPS map 451, um, but it does have AIS capability. My requirements for AIS on the boat was, I wanted to have a chart overlay. Um, now I know people get away with just having the, uh, the kind of like the radar symbol on the, the VHF or on the unit themselves, but I actually wanted the chart overlay so I could see exactly where the, the boats were um, because I just think that's going to be a, a better system to understand and a quicker one to understand if you're going to be on a collision course. And it's all this plotter's fault of why I started thinking about AIS because um, I started looking through the menus just when I was bored one, one time when we were stuck in port and I started looking through here and I found this wonderful thing called the AIS alarm. And I was like, oh, okay, so we can start having AIS alarms on here and we start putting ranges in uh, and time difference and this kind of stuff. And I thought, actually, this could actually be a, a, a nice unit to use for AIS um, because the charts, you know, are not, are not particularly that bad. Um, you can see exactly where you are on it. It's a small screen, yes, I, I absolutely agree. It's a very small screen, but you know, for the purpose of collision avoidance and it's gonna sound a signal if we are on a collision course, I think it's gonna be fantastic for us. So on the back of this device, we have the connection that it's already got, which is connected to the GPS antenna and the power supply. But we also have the option on here, which isn't that one, it's this one here, which is NM NMEA2000, which means that we can have AIS connected into there. But it does also mean that in the future, should we ever want to upgrade our chart plotter, then what I'm putting in today is not going to prohibit us or stop us from putting something bigger in the Garmin's place. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I think this is going to be the cheapest way to get AIS on our boat uh, and also get the chart overlay as well as a bit of a bonus. So inside these uh, wonderful boxes, we have, obviously this is the transponder, and in here, I believe that this is going to be the um, GPS antenna. So one GPS antenna, which we need to connect somewhere. And then in this box, we should have the transponder. Uh, 
uh, user manual, wiring diagram, I assume, it's a wonderful QR code if you want to visit the website. I don't think that's going to be very helpful. And obviously one transponder and a couple of cables to connect it to. So, and then obviously all the other thing I've got is this uh, wonderful VHF splitter. And again, I'm gonna have to have a quick read of those, see how we get those connected up. And one transponder and some cables to connect. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to connect it up pretty much like this, apart from the plotter there is not gonna be connected through these, these wires here. The chart plot is gonna be connected through the NMEA 2000 on this bus system here that I'm gonna put in. So I've, I've bought a NMEA 2000 kind of starter kit. So that gives me a backbone and then two drop downs uh, and two end connectors as well. So I'll need to connect the power supply to that as well and sort that out, but uh, that's what we'll crack on with now. So what's gonna be a couple hours for me fettling around is gonna be a quick five minutes for you, I think. So this is how our current system wired. And then this is how I want the system to be wired with our AIS connected. And then finally, this gives me an option for the future to upgrade it and link the two systems together and potentially a new chart plotter. As you can hear there, the radio is actually working and on our screen here, we've got obviously AIS signals, um, which are all working. So that's our AIS done. Uh, it's a fairly easy job to be honest, just plug and play. The only thing I'll say about that kit is um, the GPS sensor, absolutely enormous amounts of cable on there. I suppose they have to cater everyone, um, but they're two molded connected on either end so whilst it's plug and play I've got loads of wire coiled up um, hidden in one of the cupboards somewhere um, I'm gonna tidy that up in the future I'm gonna get some uh, rewirable connectors hopefully and, and so I can chop the cable and just shorten it because it, it just looks a bit of a mess in there at the minute um, but yeah if you like the video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because season 3 is starting soon so we'll see you then